Hey everyone, I'm doing a review today. It's uh, another game from the Xbox Games Pass. Uh, as always, I highly recommend you get it. It's uh, well worth uh, $10 or something a month, I think it is, uh, to, to get it. Uh, you get an access to a whole bunch of really good games that you might not necessarily play otherwise, and uh, it's uh, well worth the investment. So today we're taking a look at Prey. Uh, I don't know if you've played it. It's a... Um, first-person mystery shooter game in the vein of Bioshock. Good morning, Morgan. So uh, you play the game as a, uh, Morgan Yu, um, and you're recruited by your brother Alex to join Transtar's research team on Talos-1, uh, a space station. Uh, the whole thing is set in an alternate universe. Um, I didn't immediately realize this, but this unfolds as you go along, um, in which John F. Kennedy has survived his assassination in 63, and that catalyzes Kennedy to direct more funding into the space program and allow it to flourish and accelerate in the space race. Uh, eventually, um, a race of aliens is encountered by Sputnik, and the U U.S. and the Soviet Union fight, um, work together to fight off and capture and study these creatures. Yeah, there's uh, there's a heap of story. I'm I'm really loath to spoil too much of it um, because the game very much starts off in a similar manner to Bioshock. Uh, there's uh, definitely a whole heck of <laughs> what the heck is going on and a few left turns and. Um, yeah, it, it the game unfolds really, really well. It's got a really good story. Um, I read that some people thought that it was perhaps a bit basic, but I think they're talking out of a hole in their backside because I actually think this was really, really good. Um, and it definitely does have similarities to Bioshock. Um, so if you really love those games, and let's be honest, they are freaking fantastic, um, I'm pretty sure you'll like this one as well. Um, the game itself has... Uh, has some little puzzles and things like that it tries to mess with your mind a little bit um as well as uh, the ability to unlock a whole bunch of abilities and things there's a skill tree that you can unlock um and you can upgrade your abilities um as you adventure through the story uh by uh getting these neuro mods that you find and you can use to upgrade your various abilities such as you know being able to uh, be stronger to move gear, heavy gear out of the way or repair computers or um, yeah do all sorts of things um, there's also the ability later on to improve your spacesuit and uh, another device that you get um, which yeah allows you to interact with the aliens uh, there's a good range of weapons and uh, bits and pieces that you pick up through the game as well. Um, you will definitely find that you will not have enough inventory to carry everything. Um, a lot of the stuff is rubbish and thankfully there's some really good um, stuff in the management interface to allow you to manage that. It will automatically sort the rubbish and put it in the recycler for you, which I think is fantastic, as well as relaying out um, the configuration of objects in your inventory space to maximize your free space um, so that's really really good I think um, I usually find some of these games where you're trying to manage all your resources and your bits and pieces and your weapons and your inventory and everything and sometimes it just becomes quite overwhelming um, so uh, good work I found that was a, a really good system it's smart quite easy to use and it doesn't make um, trying to manage all of that overwhelming and detract from the gameplay um, I want to play the story, I don't want to project manage the story, if you know what I mean. Um, there's an interesting array of weapons, um, I guess I should probably mention those. Um, you start off with a fairly basic sort of club type thing, um, you can get a pistol, apparently there's a shotgun, I've yet to see it, um, I've got some sort of beam weapon. Uh, there's a nerf gun, which is interesting, which you can uh, shoot out and use to activate touch panels from a distance, um, so that's that's, I think, an original idea. Oh, there's sorts of um, lures uh, and sort of grenade type things, um, as well as those sort of, like, the canisters and things that you can pick up and haul around as well and explode to sort of mess up uh, the creatures if you can find them. In some levels, it can be uh, quite a good tactic to purposely do something like rupture a gas line, um, so you can actually create a jet of burning hot plasma um, that will shoot out of the pipes in multiple places and burn them, um, bearing in mind you need to watch out for you. Um, one way to get past those, if they are jetting flame or electricity or whatever, is to use the goo gun on them, or the glue gun, I forget which it is, uh, but it shoots basically a big ball of glue. Um, think like 
uh, Mr. Incredible being brought down by those cannons uh, in, in uh, Syndrome's Lair. Um, it shoots out like a big ball of adhesive and you can use that to, to gum up the pipe. Um, you can also come along and smash it again uh, with your, your mallet or your, your crowbar or whatever it is and uh, you know set the fire back off again. Um, but there's been a few times where I've put, uh, I've thrown like a um, compressed gas canister at the lines and ruptured the lines and created quite a satisfying explosion and taking out a bunch of um, Typhons, particularly the smaller ones as well. They're quite easy to take out. Um, I think there was a room with about eight of those in it. And um, when I blew out the opening to get into the room, as they poured through, they all got incinerated. So that worked quite well for me. Throughout the game you collect uh, rubbish and bits of scrap and things like that which can be recycled and turned into resources which you can later use to fabricate equipment. Um, it's a, a, if you found the plan for the particular item you want it's a good way to be able to make just the items you want rather than have to scavenge all the, over the place looking for those things all the time. Um, so that's really good. Uh, you can also upgrade um, your equipment. Um, particularly your weapons and things like that and improve the abilities on those as well uh, but they are largely dependent on your unlock skills and uh, while it's reasonably easy to unlock level one um, I, it does take a lot more neuro mods and they are very sparingly given out so um, I have found it um, difficult to lock, uh, unlock beyond level one at the moment um, just because there are quite a lot of things on the skill tree that you want and quite a few abilities um, that really change the way the gameplay uh, plays. Um, there are a lot of open areas um, with the creatures uh, patrolling around in them uh, and I guess uh, the, the main mechanic about this game is these particular creatures are able to shapeshift so they can assume the appearance of uh, items and things that are in the world and uh, it's a good way that, that sometimes they can uh, surprise you and ambush you and, and you know leap up off the desk when you walk up and things like that. Um, there is a, a means later on, a piece of equipment that helps you to detect them later on and um, and I guess interpret their abilities and then later apply those abilities to yourself as well but uh, that comes on later in the story. The uh, Typhon are genuinely um, pretty scary. There are quite a lot of times where uh, they will genuinely frighten you, um, especially if you don't know that they're in the room. Um, you might just hear scuttling, they'll jump down out of the roof and things like that. Um, there are also larger versions as well called Phantoms, and I believe there's some much... I've encountered some larger, again, ones, um, and I think there's some much larger like boss ones uh, but the uh, the phantoms have sort of sonic attacks and things as well and that they are genuinely very hard to bring down um, especially with uh, the very limited weaponry that you've got um, I've got a pistol which has a reasonable amount of ammunition uh, but no sort of real stopping power um, there was a beam weapon that I managed to find later on in the story which was really good but uh, the ammunition for it has been pretty well non-existent um, you can take advantage of some environmental hazards and things like that to help you take them down, which I found handy. So uh, picking up a, a gas um, canister of like compressed gas or something like that and detonating that near them will sometimes help take those creatures down. Um, but uh, a really good tip for taking out the phantoms um, is to attack them from behind. Um, they're a lot easier to damage from the rear than they are front on and they will kill you pretty fast if, they, if you attack them from the front. Um, also they hunt um, by I think vision um, based sense so uh, you know if they see you uh, you really want to disappear pretty quickly um, or I ideally just avoid letting them see you um, try to stay behind them as much as you can as the space station was developed sometime in the 60s and has passed through a number of different custodial hands um, the there are varying different styles to different areas of the station so when you're in the more commercial sector though it's um, run by a Transtar it's a lot more sort of art deco very glitzy very um, fancy um, you go into the Russian parts it's very utilitarian a lot more basic um, grungy and things like that uh, so there is a, a reasonable variation in locations um, and certainly a lot of environmental effects and things um, fire electrical effects um, there are some opportunities to um, go out into space as well so you can get out, into outlock, uh, out the airlock and navigate the outside of the station using a thruster pack um, which 
I think added an extra dimension to the game, which was really, really fun. The station was fully populated by fully developed characters as well, so you can follow their individual stories as you uh, encounter their remains around the station. Um, sometimes you'll have to go looking for them and um, you know in the computers you'll find out what their story was and where they've been and you know you'll have to hunt, the, hunt down where they've ended up to get their key card or, or some resource that they have that you really need to, to use to escape or destroy the station. Which uh, brings me to another salient point. I understand that also there are multiple paths and different endings as well. Um, now I know a lot of the time this is really played up by games to make out that this is a real major thing. Um, in reality, it, you know, there's probably only a few options. Uh, but it's really good that there are different opportunities and um, I believe there are a couple of pivotal options at the end that kind of change the outcome of the story significantly as well so um, that's certainly something good it adds some replayability to the game oh one actual uh, really nice touch as well I thought and it's only a very little thing um, I mean it doesn't make a huge difference to the game but it's really nice that you can play as a male Morgan or female Morgan um, just to give some of our lady friends uh, a choice as well when they're playing the game so um, nice touch there guys good work so Overall, it's a really, really good game. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, I think it's a great story, a really interesting environment, really inst interesting creatures. Uh, there's a good variety of mechanics in there. Um, there's also some DLC available. There's a Moon Crash add-on, which uh, I believe extends the story um, with sort of a spelunky um, rogue-type mechanic to it. Uh, I haven't tried that, that one yet, but uh, I may check it out when I get to the end of the game. Um, I haven't finished it yet. Vicious Pony uh, reckoned that he finished it in 25 hours, but uh, he's had time to play hardcore all the way through it, and I haven't, so <laughs> I will keep chipping away at it. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I definitely suggest you check out this game. It's a, a really great game, and um, I'm really enjoying it. So uh, thanks to Game Pass for putting some decent games on there. Um, as always, it's worth checking that out as well if you haven't got it. Um, it's a really good way to pick up some good games, uh, even some older games that you might not have tried. So, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope it's motivated you to want to check out Prey. Uh, as always, if you like the review, um, please click on subscribe below, and uh, feel free to leave any comments, and I'll see you for the next review. Um, my gameplay output has slowed down a little bit now I've gone back to work, uh, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some more reviews soon. So, thanks for watching, and uh, check out Prey. Bye! Feel compromised. Specimens required. Warning. Examination theater compromised. Warning. Examination theater compromised.